This video is brought to you by Patreon. In that, my patrons give me a budget to go out and buy gear and test it. And so this month I bought a Sonos Arc. Now the proper name for this product is a soundbar. But I call it a tube speaker because that's what it is. It's a tube with a bunch of different speaker drivers inside. Now people buy soundbars generally to improve the sound of their TV viewing experience because speakers built into TVs don't sound all that good. And using the Sonos Arc connected to my Samsung frame, watching Netflix, vocals are presented with really, really good clarity. Bass is plenty punchy. And so for that sort of TV viewing scenario, the Sonos Arc is very good indeed. It's much better than the speakers built into the Samsung. But what's it like for playing music. Now the Arc can stream music in the same way as pretty much any Sonos loudspeaker. And let's not forget that the Sonos app is one of the few third-party apps that properly integrates Apple Music. And let us also not forget that you can use Rune to stream to any Sonos loudspeaker. And like a lot of Sonos speakers, we have some touch-sensitive controls on the top of the Arc. We get play pause, volume up, volume down. Behind the non-removable grille on the Arc are 11 different drivers, and they are powered internally by 11 different amplifiers. There are eight bass drivers. There are three silk dome tweeters. The bass drivers, I think, are sort of oval shaped. I think there are four along the front, two on the top, and then two firing out to the sides from each end. And then the tweeters, I think, are all on the front, three of them, and two of them sort of fire diagonally out of the speaker, so not directly forwards. One of them goes directly forwards, two go diagonally out. One reason to buy the Arc is its Dolby Atmos support, or rather virtualized Dolby Atmos support, because a proper Dolby Atmos system puts speakers in the ceiling and behind you, and obviously the Arc is just a bar in front of you, so it has to virtualize it. Even though our focus is music here, just a reminder, if you want to get Dolby Atmos soundtracks with your Netflix viewing, you have to be subscribed to Netflix's top tier. One supplier of Dolby Atmos content music-wise is Apple Music. Apple call it spatial audio. But the Sonos app's Apple Music integration doesn't support Dolby Atmos content. We have to feed the Arc over HDMI eARC to give it that Dolby Atmos slash spatial audio content. And that means a connection between the TV and the Arc. And then for me, what I'm using here is I'm using an Apple TV 4K running Apple Music to then feed the TV, which then feeds the Arc. Man, this is super complicated, right? When you get into this Dolby Atmos world and HDMI Arc and eARC, oh, it's a new world for me. But basically, anyway, you can't stream spatial audio with the Sonos app. You have to do it over the Arc connection. And one of the best ways to do that is with an Apple TV box running the Apple Music app. Now, the Sonos app is still useful in this case because we can use it to confirm that the Sonos Arc is actually receiving a Dolby Atmos signal. And we can also use the settings to adjust the sort of virtualized height of the sound that comes out of the speaker when it receives such a signal. So I started out by testing the spatial audio slash Dolby Atmos coming from Apple Music 
into the arc by pulling up this new Jeff Mills DJ mix. And it's there to showcase what spatial audio can do. And Jeff Mills basically makes techno, and so it's a continuous DJ mix, right? But the Dolby Atmos version of this continuous DJ mix isn't a continuous DJ mix. It is not gapless if you play it back with Dolby Atmos turned on. If you turn off Dolby Atmos, then Apple Music plays you the stereo version, and it is gapless. So I just thought, what the hell? What? <laughs> like it's, it's a DJ mix, it's meant to be gapless. So then what I did was I, I went searching for some other spatial audio tracks like Lord, The Beatles, R.E.M., Iggy Pop, Pink Floyd, and I put all those into a playlist. And then I played that playlist. But I wasn't playing the whole track, so I'd skip from one track to the next. And I'd noticed that the, maybe the first half second of each song was missed. Or rather, you'd hear the song sort of slowly ramp up, as if the arc was just taking maybe a split second or two to register it was getting a Dolby Atmos signal and start to decode that signal. So if your song starts with a, I don't know, a drum hit or like a, a, a big moment, then you miss that big moment. One song in my Dolby Atmos playlist is Iggy Pop's The Passenger. But if you go over to, the, you see that the only song that is encoded in Dolby Atmos is The Passenger. The rest of the album is in stereo. Like, what the hell? Why is that? It just seems crazy to me. And that's the thing. There just isn't a lot of spatial audio, Dolby Atmos audio, out there on Apple Music. There's far, far less than there is even of high-res audio. It's just another little kind of audio niche plaything, as far as I can tell. But what does Dolby Atmos encoded music sound like through the Sonos Arc? Well, on some tracks, you can definitely notice the extra height that the Atmos gives us. It sounds quite tall. And I did notice that, especially on the REM track, Try Not To Breathe, that the layer separation between instruments is more pronounced on the Atmos version than the stereo version. And occasionally you kind of get, I guess, sounds that fire left and right from the soundbar that, I guess, go further than the limits of the soundbar itself, not by much. And they do in kind of induce a kind of minor wow moment. But those things are fairly few and far between with the music mixes that I played. But rarely does music, whether it's stereo or Atmos content, escape the sort of the physical boundaries of the Sonos Arc. Only very occasionally does it do this. And it often sounds quite reluctant. Music doesn't step into the room. It's sort of, it's quite standoffish. Like, you feel like I'm here and the music is very much over there under the TV. It doesn't envelop the listener, it doesn't wrap around the listener. It definitely isn't some kind of surround sound at all. I don't think there's any way to do that unless you actually have speakers behind you. But even with stereo content fed into the arc, dynamics are very good. And that means it's very good for capturing the drama of say like a, a movie soundtrack. Bass is excellent. It goes pretty damn low, even though it's not a, a, a sort of very impactful bass, you can hear it going low. And that's no doubt attributable to the, the power of DSP inside this box. And that deep bass extension does lay an excellent foundation for the sort of rhythmic flow of, say, Lord's Royals. But it's comparisons with other gear, side-by-side -side comparisons with other gear, that put the Sonos Arc's audible performance in context. Now, I don't have another soundbar to compare it to, but what if we were to compare this soundbar to a hi-fi system that could be bought for the same money? Because in the last video, I introduced a 1,000 euro hi-fi system. That's the same money as a Sonos Arc. And that comprises Dali Spectre 2 loudspeakers, Rotel A11 Tribute Amplifier, and a DAC from Topping called the E30. And then I connect the DAC to my TV using Toslink. So how does the Arc compare to this hi-fi system? Well, the Sonos box definitely goes lower in the bass. 
the Dali sort of bottom out, mid 50s hertz, and they're not sort of bass monsters. But the Dali do step the sound into the room. It meets the listener halfway. So when I'm sat listening to that sort of Dali Rotel system, I can feel the music coming forward towards me. And it's much wider and it's much taller. Even with the Dolby Atmos engaged on the arc, the stereo playback from a hi-fi system with two separated speakers on stands just sounds much bigger in all directions, even depth. So that Jeff Mills DJ mix on Apple Music sounds larger in every way possible played through the hi-fi system than the Arc, and it plays back gaplessly. And if we compare that to the Arc itself, even playing the Dolby Atmos version of that Jeff Mills mix, it sounds comparatively boxed in and distant. Moreover, the Arc's take on acoustic music, like Bright Eyes' I'm Wide Awake It's Morning, or Robin Hitchcock's Spooked, is far more artificial sounding than it is through the hi-fi system. Organic, the arc is not. It doesn't sound organic at all. It's crisp and clean and reasonably transparent, I guess maybe even more transparent than the hi-fi system by a nose, but it just sounds rigid and uptight and just, it, it puts a, sort of a, a metallic sheen over music. And these fundamental differences between the arc and the similarly priced hi-fi system are for once night and day and not even Sonos's TruePlay room compensation software can save the arc from what I find to be a pretty mediocre performance with music playback. The Sonos Arc really is for people who want to improve the sound of their TV with a low footprint device and a device that's easy to connect. But it's also for those people who only listen to music occasionally. And that isn't me. So I'm sending this back to Sonos. I've got it on a 100 day money back return guarantee. And I'm definitely gonna be making use of that. In fact, I can't get rid of this quick enough. It is such a major disappointment for me compared to the same money spent on audio hardware or more traditional audio hi-fi hardware. Now I know that that hardware comes with more physical intrusion and you need to have speakers on stands, a separate amplifier, separate DAC. It's a little bit more complicated to set up, but the results are profoundly better than what I think really is a high-end soundbar. I mean, the Sonos Arc is not cheap. It's not a budget soundbar. So if this is typical of soundbar's performance, then, <laughs> I don't know, as a music fan, you can keep them. And I'll happily stick with the hi-fi system because the difference is significant. We might say that the sound of the hi-fi system blows the sound of the Sonos Arc out of the water. So yeah, for music playback, I didn't like the Sonos Arc. But if you like this video, then please hit the like button down below. If you like my attitude to audio gear and that it sometimes encompasses Sonos products, I will remind you that I really love the Sonos Play 5 or the Sonos 5, whatever they're called now. I love those, I don't love this. So if you dig that, then please subscribe to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching. The Arc does have some, what am I gonna say here? And then decoding that, and then stop. Let me start that again. We've got play pause and then forward. I think I'm, yeah. Dolby Atmos in, encoded. Mm. Start that again. Night and day. They really are night and day. <laughs> I got carried away. Yeah, I know. This is always what I was going to say in my head, and that's why I stopped. <laughs> With a minimal footprint, but who only. Mm.